para X. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of para X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Within the law you must, in perfect love and perfect trust. Mind the threefold laws you should, three times bad and three times good. These eight words the read fulfill, and ye harm none to what ye will. Welcome to Stirring the Cauldron. Now, here's your host, Marla Brooks. And Mary meet once again, everybody, and welcome. Now, tonight my guests are Barry and Connie Strom, and they're the hosts of Haunted History here on Pair X. And on, it's on Sundays. And as well, she's got, I mean, they have three other shows that I'm going to let Barry tell you about it because I don't remember the where and the when and the what about them. And I just can't keep up. But I am keeping up with his new book. And tonight is no exception. Um, for those of you who might not know, Barry is an author, lecturer, and medium and channeler who communicates with spirits of the highest level. And in his new book, Modern Messages of the Archangels, he channeled 20 archangels who revealed their roles and answered questions and gave out messages. So those of you who are listening live and not in the Para-X chat room, you might want to come and join us because you'll be able to ask Barry questions, Barry and Connie questions, or you can share comments that you might have. And we're at paraxradionetwork.com. Hi, Barry and Connie. Hi there, Marla. Good evening. <laughs> you just had you un, unmuted your mic too, didn't you? Just now. <laughs> uh, who I, was? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I forget doing that sometimes, and yeah, it's not good. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I'm you know okay. So I just mentioned four shows a week, and I'm going to have you let them know what they are and when in a minute. But you know what? I've got my hands full with one show. And you do quite a bit of channeling throughout the week on the shows. And I know in mediumship and those of us who do oracle or reading um, tarot decks, um, or any type of divination for that matter, it draws a lot of energy out of us. And when you're channeling with all that high-level stuff, um, do they energize you or do they drain you or you just go with the flow? Well, you kind of go with the flow, but it does drain you. And uh, especially when you're of old age like I am, it, uh, it's a lot. And uh, couple that with trying to put your books together. And we're reaching a time we need to cut back a little bit. So it's probably inevitable. I'm not sure I see that quite happening, but um, – before we forget, talk about tell everybody where the shows are and when, other than the Pair X show, because at least I got that one right. Yeah, now you're testing my memory. Uh, okay. oh. We do a, we do a show a show on uh, the Voice America Network. It's on Tuesdays at uh, nine o'clock Pacific time, and it's called Spirit Speak, Exploring the Afterlife. It's we, we we it's pretty close to the format that we do on channeling history, which we do on Parax on on Sunday nights. Uh, Wednesday mornings we do a podcast. It's called a weekly message from Jesus, and then Sunday mornings we do another podcast, which is called a Sunday sermon. And on that one we. We bring a mess, Sunday morning message. It's usually about 18, 20 minutes long, and uh, it's from all the holy saints, angels. Anybody really wants to come through, uh, Mary, uh, Blessed Mother Mary wanted to come through Sunday, so she did the last one Sunday morning. I really don't know who come who 
is going to show up. It's a kind of a unique situation, but that's the four of them. All right. Well, let's get let's get into the book a little bit. Um, but I just want to mention that towards the end of the show, there may be an archangel that would like to uh, be channeled in by Barry. So everybody, make sure and stick around till the end, and we'll see who went and what they have to say. All right. <clears throat> so first off, um, you know, some people may not know what an archangel is, as opposed to any other angel or like a fallen angel or an angel guide. So what is an archangel? An archangel is one that has outstandingly served God throughout the the billions of years. They're an angelic energy. No angel has ever reincarnated. And there's no such thing as a fallen angel. And there's no such thing as an evil angel. But the archangels have served God and have ascended through the uh, much the same as humans. We have their heaven has seven realms. So we keep coming back and reincarnating to learn our lessons and try to move up through the realms. And when you hit the seventh, you're you're the closest to God. It's very similar. The, our, the angels do the same thing. Uh, there's no such thing as a as an angel in hell, but like humans can have. But it's there. There's ascended in levels of closer to God. That's basically the same as a human soul does. You just said there aren't any fallen angels, but <clears throat> sorry, but we've heard that terminology all along. And as far as Lucifer goes, I mean, they say he was a fallen angel. So why? Are you saying there isn't, and is there, you know, some angels that maybe get demoted at points if they're not doing their job right? Well, it's it all comes down to how the the ancients interpreted things. They really had no idea what what angel they were talking to, what energy it was. So if you look in the Gospels, there's only like three angel, three archangels mentioned in the Gospels. Well, there's actually probably over 40 of them in reality. Because the ancients, when they wrote about them and, and tried to name them, they had no clue what was going on, really. And the only way that they could associate um, evil was an angel falling from heaven. And that's just simply the way that they, they wrote it down. So, like, most of the inaccuracies that are in the Gospels are... Just simply the way the ancients had to interpret things. Uh, they had no idea how to do the creation of humans, so they come up with Adam and Eve. But that's not actually, there There was no Adam and Eve either. So there's many things that the ancients wrote about, and thousands of years ago, they didn't have a, the advantage of much of the education that we have today. So it's just simply... The only way they could think of Lucifer was an angel that was kicked out of heaven. It's, I mean, it's just all in how they looked at things. Well, because usually when there's good and and the angel, most angels are good. I mean, you can't have good without bad. So that's maybe what came up with them. That you know, you, nothing is ever completely good. It's the yin well, and the yang kind of thing. Well, but heaven is. There's, they continuously tell us that there's no evil in heaven. That evil is evil is simply a creation of energies that God puts on earth to test us. And there, there's no need to be tested in heaven. The tests are over. But when they, some, I mean, I guess angels go up, like you said, the ladder. Um, and they start being like novices, you know, and then they go up and up and up and up. But aren't there any that might have uh, got kicked out because they just weren't doing the right thing or, or weren't getting it or something? Um, I'm not aware of any. Okay. They, the archangels, they have many, many other angels that work with them. Mm -hmm. And they... It, well, an angel may specialize in something. They they cross, they help each other, they they do many things. If you pray to an angel, to an archangel, mm -hmm. you may be praying to the wrong to the right wrong angel that doesn't specialize specialize in mm -hmm. what 
and the help that you need. So they'll refer to another one or they might pass it down the line to one. But there's really no evil in heaven. So it doesn't make sense that there would be any archangels that were evil either. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, And angels are not incarnate souls, meaning they were never human. So I think I might have asked you once, but I think I don't remember what you said if you did. Um, How are angels created? God created all energies. That, that, that's why they call it creation. So the angels have been around for billions of years, you know, since the, the Big Bang. Just the same as human souls have been around since then. It's, uh, I, I, I don't know the mechanics of it, but I know that God created angels and God created human energies at the same time. Hmm. I mean, it's just kind of interesting because it's probably something that we couldn't wrap our head around if we, if I were told, we probably still wouldn't get it. But, you know, it just seems like, you know, you need something tangible, I think. And, you know, but that's what we think, not what they're up to. So it's well, probably true. We've asked them about creation multiple mm-hmm. times. We've you know, asked a lot of spirits about it. And what they tell us is that all of the gods got together and used this energy. And they created the universe, much like like the Big Bang. But mm-hmm. the Big Bang is created by all the energies of these of different gods that come together. And they, to even complicate it, they tell us that there was a universe that existed before the one that we're in. And they tell us that these energies even existed in that previous universe. So. Mm-hmm. But you are correct. There's absolutely no way we're ever going to understand this. Hmm. Well, hopefully when we get over there, maybe they'll let us in on it. <laughs> but, yeah, but well, maybe, you'll, better, you'll have a much better chance over there. Yeah. We'll have to grow it, though. You know, We'll have to get into the – drop the human aspect and start thinking the way they do. They tell us there's quite a transition period, yes. Yeah. Um, there's a question in the chat room. Um, Cece wants to know, I wonder what – Barry and Connie think about the Brooks movie Defending Your Life uh, Sadly I never heard of it <laughs> I don't It sounds familiar to me but I'm not sure Alright CC you can I don't know anything about it Kind of like fill in the blanks <laughs> Okay Sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, Let me see Let me see um, In channeling In the channeling Archangel Israel, I'm never going to be. I'm not going to be saying these word the names right, probably. But um, he explained that angels are always around to serve and to help humans and animals and any creations that are God's children. Um, so, can we? I mean, are, are angels just coming around to people, or, or do they think that they they need help, and that's when they come around? I mean. It's well, like they're on call 24 7, right? The angels are always around us. In fact, I had an incident where an angel helped me. I was at a friend's house carrying a cup of hot tea, and I walked down, started going down the stairs to go to their theater room, and I tripped and went down about three steps onto mm. the landing. And I felt like I was in slow motion. And when I got to the bottom, I looked, and amazingly, not one drop of tea came out of the cup. <laughs> I asked Laura, who is our guide, mm-hmm. our master guide, what happened there? And she said an angel broke my fall for me. Mm. So they're around us all the time. We're just not aware of it. Yeah, and sometimes we're really not aware of it, but they show themselves to them in a different form, you know, without what we would think an angel would look like. But, you know, I've I've heard stories from people who you know said that somebody came up to them and they were in trouble or whatever and yes. got, they got help and then they blinked their eye and poof, that poof, that yes. person was gone so yes. i've heard uh, of three different people telling me stories like that yeah and my was one of them i was born while my father was over in europe fighting world war ii mm-hmm. and mother had not heard from my dad for about a week and usually she had a letter from him every day And she said, this nice lady walked up to her and she said, 
I just got back and I saw your husband and he's everything's fine with him. He said that you're not to worry. Mm. And so I checked with our guide and she said, yes, that was an angel helping to give her some peace. I was 13 months old before my dad laid eyes on me in person. Hmm. Well, I can't, I can't even imagine, you know, that um, anybody, unless it was some crackpot person, would say something like that, you know, just mm-hmm. out of the top of their heads. I mean, it, it's, mm, you know. Like, you know, yeah. at the time, he was with uh, Patton's Third Army fighting the Battle of the Bulge. So, it's, wow. uh, no, she was not with him. <laughs> <laughs> It, uh, mm-hmm. it was it was definitely an angelic form that came to him. Um, CC explained the movie um, well in two ways. Um, a man dies, and it's kind of like a trial where they pick up they pick days of your life to decide if you're going to re- if you're ready to move on or to go back down to earth. Well, it's it's a little bit different. Mm-hmm. You immediately you go into heaven and an angel will be there to help you meet your family members. And then you, you are judged by your guides and it is possible that they will show you things that you've completely forgotten and that has harmed others. They'll show you what you've done right in your life, how much you followed your life plan. And then depending on, you know, if you've done good or not, you'll stay in the level where you are or you'll advance in a level if you've done really poorly, then you'll probably be moved down in a level. But it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a give and take. But you will be judged. They will show actually show you. It's not like they'll tell you about it mm-hmm. because you can look. They'll let you look forward and look at the past in your life, and they'll they'll tell you what you've done wrong. Yeah. Um, she also added to it, and it said. Um, a man who finds himself on trial in the afterlife where proceedings examine his lifelong fears to determine whether he'll be yet again reincarnated on earth. That's really close to the way it goes. Yeah, it's it's close. But even if you are demoted and you know, you've know you done badly, you'll create a karma for your next life. Mm-hmm. So you have free will on the other side, just like you do on this side. And when you just when you you determine when you want to reincarnate, mm-hmm. and when you do, then you work with your guides and you make up a life plan. If there's karmas in it; they include that in the life plan, and they put in lessons that you have to learn. And then you make the decision, and then you come back and start over again with a clean slate. So there's, because I've had so many people say, I don't want to come back. This life was so bad. I never want to ever, ever come back. Do they have a choice? Yes, they don't have to. Uh, we've, we've spoken with angels or with uh, spirits that don't want to come back. Uh, Ulysses Grant's wife said she's not coming back. Ulysses is, but, but his wife isn't because she was so upset with what took place. But there, there's no time on the other side, so there's really no rush. If you want to wait a thousand of our years and and change your mind and come back, so be it. But if if you're at a level that you're satisfied with, and each level obviously gets better and better on what your soul can do on the other side. Uh, for instance, if if you're in the fifth level, you cannot go up and visit anyone in the sixth. So if your family members are in the sixth, they're allowed to come down and visit you, but you can't go up and visit and visit them. So souls, they may be happy where they are. If they're in like the sixth level, they got all kinds of benefits. And so maybe they don't come back anymore. They're happy. But mm-hmm. if you want to keep trying to advance, then they have to reincarnate. It's simply the only way they can do it. Keeping up with the Joneses. In a sense, you know. In a sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Another question from the chat room. Um, How do you answer when a spirit pleads with you to help them move on? How how does who answer? (laughs) I guess It's all It's all based on how you live your life. I mean, once you pass, it's out of your hands. It's over. You, You, that life established a record. 
And if you were good, you're going to move on. If you were bad, you're not. You're going to stay where you are or go back. So it's how you live your life. I mean, it's just follow the golden rule. Do unto others you want them to do unto you. Use common sense in your life. Help others, and you'll advance. If you don't, you won't. Pretty simple. Well, if, if, I guess, and I think she's also kind of saying that, you know, in a mediumistic sort of way, if a spirit comes to you. That and comes to me? Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, pleads with you to help them move on. Can you do that? No. I can give them advice how to move on. Mm-hmm. Uh, simply change your life. Live a good life and you'll move on. But uh, there's nothing I can do for them. I can make suggestions. But you have free will. You have an ego. It's how you respond to those two things that will determine how you're going to move on. It's that simple. So, yeah, so they're already there, and they need to find – do they have counselors up there, you know, angel counselors that, you know, you can go to? Yeah, for instance, uh, a soul may have been very troubled and commit suicide. Well, an angel will – will will help get them through the transition. Now, I mean, the person who commits suicide has to watch all the grief they cause, but there there there'll be help with them to try to help them with the transition. But they must serve the karma for what they did. There's no way around that. Mm. And so yeah. many people don't believe there's karma. Go ahead, Connie. Sorry. We all have a master guide, and the master guide guides us through our entire life on this planet. And when we go back over, they meet up with us and go through our life, just like in this movie. Um, was talking, mm-hmm. and they help you with your plans, help you guide to guide you with wherever you want to go next. Like if you want to reincarnate, do another life, and pay for the karma for what you did, or learn lessons that you need to learn. That it may not have been something bad, but something that you need to learn. Your guide will help you with it. Your guides help you choose your parents. Mm-hmm. Style. Yeah. Our guide did an incredible job because Barry and I were born in two towns that were an hour and a half apart. Oh. And they had my, my dad get it changed and get a job close to where Barry lived. And then they, our house burned down. So my parents decided, with the help of their guides, I'm sure, well, we might as well just move to Harrisburg now. And I was... In, moved to a place where my best friend that I made while I was there was Barry's neighbor. Mm. Barry's neighbor. Because Barry and I were meant to be together to do what we're doing right now. So our, mm-hmm. our guides are really important in our lives. They really help us if we listen to them. Now, and you, you asked a question about karma. Karma mm-hmm. is, is incredibly real. It's, and it, usually it can be in the same life that you're living. You can, you know, you can have bad things happen because you did bad things during the life. But most of the karma takes place in your next life. For instance, an individual is blessed with great wealth. They don't do anything to help others with it. They buy 20 yachts, whatever. But God blesses them so that they use that great wealth to help others. They refuse to do it. When they come back in the next life, they're going to live a life of poverty because they're going to understand what it's like mm-hmm. to, to need help. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's why as long people ask, why does God allow poverty? Well, a good answer is it's karma because in that prior life, an individual did, did not use great wealth to help out. So they're going to pay in their future life. That makes sense. Yeah. I've got more questions. Um, <laughs> um, David in the chat room says, what are examples of karma that can and cannot be resolved by asking God for forgiveness? Forgiveness is a very, very interesting concept. You can ask for forgiveness, but if you don't act and change what you've done, then he's not going to forgive you. You're responsible for everything that you do. So you can ask God for forgiveness, and then the next day you go out and do the same thing. Well, if you change your life after you ask for for forgiveness, 
then that will help wipe out the bad that you did prior to that point of your life. But forgiveness is, it's a very, very interesting concept. It's not exactly what, how people think it, thinks that it works. You can ask for it, but if you get it, depends on your actions, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. If you deserve it, you get what you deserve. One yes. way or the other, maybe. Indeed, indeed. Uh, the worst thing is that you, you know, you ask for forgiveness, say that you're going to do this and that, and then go out and do exactly the opposite. Well, now you've got a real problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, I mean, you can compound it. You, As if we don't have enough problems. <laughs> um, really? Another another chat room question from Patty. Um, Michael is the archangel of protection. Can he step in and save a life on his own, or does he need permission for, from God to save that person's life? Okay, now that's an int- that that can go a couple different ways. Let's say you're following your life plan and you're doing really good things. Well, something happens that was not originally planned because everything changes once a human life. And you never know. Uh, a truck is bearing down on you on as you want to cross an intersection, and that wasn't in your life plan, and you got stuff to do yet. So Michael can step in and do something to change that. Uh, we were uh, we were on a trip last week up in New York, and we were heading on. We we're going to be doing something very very important for God, and. We're driving along, and this guy starts to just swing out blindly, and it's just like you could see in slow motion. This car was stopped and put back in its lane, <laughs> and then and, I mean, and then it was Michael. He stepped in because we got things we need to do off of this trip. Mm-hmm. So it was they can step in, and it might be that it might be a, your life plan will have several exit points. Times, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it might be you're doing really good things, and Michael will step in and save and get you through that exit point so you can continue to live. Mm-hmm. It might be That's that great. you're doing that you're doing lousy things, and he'll say, "Oh, I think I'll watch this," <laughs> and, and out you go. Because mm-hmm. you have to go back to heaven to wipe the slate clean and start over. Sometimes you're better off passing and, and going back and so you stop screwing up get your new plan and come on back in a future life and tell the story of your heart attack which one <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> we're watching the Utes play <laughs> well I, I I didn't realize it then but I was at about six years ago I was at an exit point and I was watching a football game on television <clears throat> And I started to have a heart attack at all the signs, went into the emergency room and said, yep, we got to get you into surgery right away. And it's, it's really bad. They showed me all this damage to my heart on the monitor. And it, so they take me in and they do the procedure. And when I wake up, I said, uh, how many stents did we, did we do? And they said, none, your heart is is in good condition. We couldn't find any damage. Mm. And I said, well, oh, you showed it to me. We went through all this crap, and, you know. Mm-hmm. He said, I can't explain it. Your heart was damaged. It's not now. Well, when I was sitting in the pre-op waiting to go into surgery, I was sitting with my eyes closed. And here comes, and in my third eye, I can see this form coming. And I look at it, and I see that it's an angel flies up in front of me, stops, and flies off. And I told Connie at the time, well, we don't have anything to worry about. I got my sign. We're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. When I came out of surgery, and a little family, I've been, throughout all this, God's given me a prayer of healing. So I've healed quite a few people with it. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting there after after the surgery was over, and in my head I hear just as clear as can be, if I can have you heal others, I can heal you as well. Well, when that when that angel flew up, he healed my heart. And that was, mm-hmm. that was the end of it. 
So we have a hundred percent proven medical miracle. It's, yeah, no kidding. Uh, and and there I, are miracles. I got to see an angel, so I knew what it was. <laughs> that was the exact moment that it happened. And that poor doctor's wow. still scratching his head. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Because it's not scientific. He can't figure it out. Yeah, he said, I have no idea what happened, but and I, it might happen again. Who knows? Yeah, huh. and, and, and the interesting part is I, I asked Laura, and I said, Laura, was that one of my exit points? And she said, yes, but we know that you had, had a lot more to do, so we had to step in and fix and make things that you could finish your books and do mm-hmm. your shows and your channelings. Mm-hmm. That's good. Well, we're going to take a quick break, so everybody hang tight, and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Stirring the Cauldron will be right back, so don't go away. If you end up with web feed, remember, you've been warned. Are you looking for a supernatural radio show that is informative and fun? A show with topics such as ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic energy, spirits, cryptids, and more, hosted by paranormal investigators with years of investigations under their belts? Then look no further than the calling 2.0, powered by the Sim Crew, hosted by paranormal investigator Jerry and psychic medium Valentina, along with others. Tune in on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, only on the Para-X Radio Network. As you go about your daily life, look closer. Every year across America, a staggering 4.2 million youth are homeless or trafficked. Covenant House is the national leader providing safe housing for youth 50 years strong. Every youth who walks into Covenant House gets clean clothes, hot meals, medical care, and a safe place to sleep. So look closer at Covenant House and help us fight youth homelessness. To help or get help, go to covenanthouse.org. Hey everyone, thank you so much for listening in to Stirring the Cauldron. I just wanted to give you a quick heads up if you don't already know about the free weekly Witches Oracle deck readings that I post on my website every Monday. Now, let me answer the age-old question before you ask it, which is, well, how do I know it's for me? And the answer is pretty simple. If you weren't meant to see it, you wouldn't know it was there. So if you're curious about what the week has in store for you, pop on over to MarlaBrooks.com every Monday and scroll down on the homepage, and there it will be. Welcome back to Stirring the Cauldron. Once again, here's your host, Marla Brooks. And my guests tonight are Barry and Connie Strom, and we're talking about his new book, Uh, modern messages from the archangels and you know i think most people are familiar with gabriel and uriel and ariel and michael and Raphael. um but like me i didn't know that there were that many i mean i was guessing i don't know what i was guessing but now that you said that there's more than 40 um how did you get turned on to more than the ones that you didn't think had or didn't they they would come through and introduce themselves and just the like guy, that that's the guy, too easy <laughs> i know i knew i knew you weren't gonna like that answer the, <laughs> the guys would would say hey you know try this one and all of a sudden we'd be trying that one or i'd be looking there's there's a there are people that have long lists of archangels online too mm, okay. so i, I if I would get a list up, and I would say, guide me to one that you, know, you want me to speak to. And all of a sudden, I'd hear this name in my head, and away we'd go. And they'd be on the next show. <laughs> so it was, I mean, they gentle, just gentle, wanted yeah. to be loved and known. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just kind of interesting that um, one thing I was reading all the names. Okay, so I want to say also that... that Every archangel that you have in there, you also say which specialty they are. Um, so that that's really helpful. But it seems to be, I mean, we seem to believe that all archangels are male for some reason. But I'm also assuming that angels have no gender um, since they were never human. Um, they just are. But then again, there is 
Archangel Muriel. Of, of you know, that was like the only woman one I saw, and she's the um, Archangel of emotional problems. Um, so, can you explain this thing about gender, no gender, or why we think they're male or mostly are or whatever? Well, they were they were named during a male dominance at time of society. Mm-hmm. In with in the ancients, males were dominant. So they would give them male names. That, and I mean, when you talk to the angels, they said names don't mean anything. They had no idea who they were talking to. They would just try to assign a name to it. Uh, on different planets, they have different names. I mean, you can call them anything you want. <laughs> I mean, it's just those are names that the ancients assigned. And they had no idea what they were doing. Uh, the IEL means of God. So they figured that angels were of God. So they gave a lot of them have the same ending. They have wings. When all the pictures of angels have wings, because how else would a, a being get from heaven to earth without wings? So when you just twitch their noses like Samantha, yeah. um. <laughs> they do. None of them have. The, yeah. I mean, when I ask and ask them, when you appear to somebody, what form mm. do you take? The answer mm-hmm. is we take the form that they think we're going to take. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to see a blue angel with wings, if that's what you're expecting, then you'll see a blue angel with wings. If you want to see a homeless guy, you'll see a homeless guy. It's that they have no form. They're energies. They've never well, had form. Well, spirits do that, too. They they come in in something that you can recognize. And, yeah, yeah, yeah you got to do that, but but we have to know their names because then we wouldn't know what their specialties are. Well, well, they have multiple. Some of them have multiple specialties. You can you can pray and just say, "I'd like to talk to an angel that's going to help me hit the lottery," and mm-hmm. then and then nobody will come forward. There you go. <laughs> I could do something <laughs> like that. Yeah. So you, well. But, but you know, if you, somebody that would help my grandmother when she's about to pass, and mm-hmm. you have no idea what name, well, then Azrael's probably is going to come to you, or one of his angels will work with Azrael. Mm-hmm. They all sign it. It's it's amazing. It's utterly amazing what angels can do. But they're not ever going to do anything that God does not want them to do. So you've got you come down with this bad cancer. Mm-hmm. You play it. You pray to Raphael to heal you. Mm-hmm. Well, if it's part of your life plan, in all probability, they're not going to help you because that's a lesson you need to learn. Mm-hmm. But let's say that you have been doing great things with your life, and you say, Raphael, will you please heal me? Well, in all in probability, you now have a good chance that God is going to give you more time to continue doing good things. Mm-hmm. Let's let's say that you are living the life as a real a hole. Mm-hmm. You say, Raphael, please help me. And if you hear this little ha ha ha, you know you're not going to get helped. <laughs> you're doing bad things. <laughs> there's it's all common sense. If you mm-hmm. lead a good life and do things, pray for miracles, because <laughs> miracles come to those that do good things. Mm-hmm. That's simple. That is simple. Um, you devote a full chapter to each archangel, explaining, like I said, who they are, what their specialization is, and um, that might not be the right way to say it, but just like doctors, each has its own specialty. Um like Archangel is, I'm not going to say it right, Azrael, <laughs> and and that's the Archangel of all aspects of death. And then Archangel Mimetronon is the Archangel of life. Um, so it's interesting. I mean, it, it really is good that you have, you're telling everybody who they are, and then, you, of course, you did the channeling. And all this, all this, um, book is about the channeling that you did with each angel and and sometimes there's a couple of them because you've done it more than once right yes yeah and and we often ask the same question to the different angels 
Mm-hmm. And, and often we'll get, we may get the same answer or we may get a different answer. But you're mm-hmm. all, I was, I'm always trying to verify what we do because mm-hmm. it, it is possible we get some bad information. Channeling is not an exact science. Okay. It's like, oh, you got that word wrong. Well, yeah, I got the word. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's not an easy thing. No. But the book consists totally of the words of the angels. Mm-hmm. I mean, w- once I get past the introduction, each chapter is simply the words of those angels. It, sometimes we had them do the um, Sunday sermon show, so we'll have like an 18-minute conversation with them with no questions. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we would have them on channeling history, and we would ask them maybe 30, 40 questions. Mm-hmm. So we have different formats in different chapters. Uh, a couple of them, like Gabriel and Raphael, we did two different chapters. One's a message and one's questions. Mm-hmm. So by the time you get through the uh, roughly 60,000 words that that book is, <laughs> you're going to know what the, you know as much as I do about angels. We cover a huge amount of information with it. Mm. Now, I want to talk about Israel for a minute. Um, in the book, you start out by saying he's the angel who helps pass over people that are, have died. Mm-hmm. But is he also the Grim Reaper who collects souls? Or, you know, it, it just... He's, why, it, why don't we let him answer that question? He's standing here. And I hope he didn't come for me, so... <laughs> well, I, I, I second the motion. <laughs> Here, here. These, these, this is going to be his words. Okay. Thank you, Marla, for asking. The Grim Reaper is what humans thought that I should look like. They thought that death was the end. They thought that it was black. So they came up with this concept of a Grim Reaper. There is no Grim Reaper. You see... I deal with people that are passing. The day that you pass will be the greatest day of your life. You will come enter, you will enter heaven and heaven is indescribable. We will be there to assist you. If you need help prior to your passing, I will send my angels to you to try to make your passing easier. If you ask for information, I will try to give it to you. We do everything that is possible so that you understand that your day of passing is nothing to be feared. Now, if you do not believe in God, then we will not be there to assist you. You will be on your own. You will find out truly that God and heaven do exist. Once you come to that realization and accept it, then we will step in and help you adapt. We do not ever want you to doubt God again. So there's no question that we will come to you at that time. But death is not something to be feared. Yes, if you do not believe in God and have spoken against him, you will be judged harshly for that. But you will enter heaven just the same. And your guides will judge you based on your life. But rest assured that we will do all that we can to assist you. So no, there is no Grim Reaper. And I wish that people would stop portraying me as an angel that causes your passing. The time of your passing was created in your life plan, and I have nothing to do with it. You will pass it uh, when it is your time, and we will be there to help. So I hope that that does clarify for you, and I hope that it will help your listeners understand that death is truly not to be feared. So thank you, and goodbye. Well, thank you. That's um, about as clear as you can get with it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, one of these archangels really surprised me. For some reason, I don't know why. But I had no idea that there was an archangel who is the archangel of 
galactic energy. I want to hear about this. Oh, you're talking about Orion. I guess. Yeah. I, for, I forgot to write it down. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's Horizon. Or, Orion. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. So Orion is a okay, you archangel. Huh? Here, I, here he is, too. Many have not heard of me or even understood that there could be one of intergalactic energies. You see, you do not understand the dimensions of intergalactic realities. The ancients did not understand. But now that you gain knowledge, we are trying to help guide you towards information. So there will be a time that you can travel the stars and that you can join with the other civilized cultures. I have been much more active in the past couple centuries because the interest in intergalactic information has become more important for humans. As humans advance, then so will my presence with those humans trying to guide them advance as well. So you have not heard from me in the past, and that is why the ancients never assigned a name to me. But as the interest in the stars of the heavens increased, those that were alive at the time, I would come to some of them and, and teach them astronomy and show them exactly what was taking place. For instance, Stonehenge, I helped guide the humans that were working to understand the simple workings of your solar system. So there will be a time in the future that more and more people will know of me. So I hope that that helps you to understand why most have not known of my name. So thank you for this opportunity, and goodbye. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we know Orion is something in astronomy, astrology, you know, whatever, but it, it was just kind of interesting that I thought, well, um, and, and it's true. I mean, there are dimensions out there, I'm sure, that we don't know about. Oh, yeah. And we're going to find out about sometimes even, you know, before we get on the other side, because they're doing a lot of work around things like that just to to get us a little bit more um, educated, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a good word? People that astro trip are, are entering the other dimension to do it. Mm -hmm. Astral projection is... Yeah. It, it's about a halfway there then, right? Yeah, that's all interdimensional stuff. Uh, yeah. Bigfoot, okay. he's interdimensional, so... That's, yeah, and they say that because nobody's ever seen any remains of a Bigfoot, you know, and, and it's, you know, just went somewhere else to die, kind of like, you know, how elephants go to die in their own spots. and yeah, They just drop back into that other dimension. Mm-hmm. So, if anyone needs to get in touch with an archangel, I mean, can they actually ask for a specific one, or and and will that one, like say Raphael or Michael um, or Gabriel, because um, you know they're the ones that people know the most, they can really get in touch with them, or will they send somebody else? No. But they're 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 universal energy, same as God. So they're in multiple places at the same time. So you're not just talking to a single energy. He's also in many other places at the same time. But one thing that they assure you is that if you specifically ask for an archangel, that archangel will hear your prayer. Hmm. He may not be able to answer it, but he will hmm. hear. Uh, if you if it's the wrong angel, then they'll pass it on to the to the right one. Uh, it's it's a very complex information system over there. But but the one thing they do do they that they will all say in every message 
is that if you ask for them, they will be there. I ask, well, how do you know that you <laughs> that you're truly there? And they said, just simply have faith that we are, because the reality is that we will be there. Well, faith is is good, and and you know, people say, well, I'm not religious, I I, I can't have faith, but faith isn't always in part in religion. It's a mindset, you know. I think. Well, faith is the foundation of everything for the, for the existence of a God and existence of a of an angel for an mm-hmm. existence of a heaven. You have to have faith. They're not going to prove it to you. Mm-hmm. Well, faith and belief. That those are two words that really should be taken seriously. Yeah, indeed. If you can believe, I mean, if you believe that you can't do something, that's a pretty strong thing because if you believe hard enough, you aren't going to be able to do that. That's if you it. believe you can, you will hmm. eventually, maybe it's trial and error a little bit, but otherwise, <laughs> you know. So one was, is there one particular archangel that you were very surprised to find out about, if that makes sense? Didn't that, know? There were about... Twelve. <laughs> you know, I was uh, a send often, for instance, uh, the archangel, and one of hers is music. After after we did send often, then we did a channeling show with uh, Mozart and Beethoven. Mm-hmm. So it's you actually have an angel that will bring you music to help you relax, to help you get to sleep. You know to to help you get into a rest mode. So, I mean, there's there's basically an angel for everything. So let's say somebody wanted to do something, you know, somebody wanted to be a, con- a concert pianist or, you know, climb Mount Everest or whatever. Um, they can step in and make that happen, or do they kind of just, you know, push a little bit? And you <laughs> we, we have to learn from our own experiences you're going to have to have that talent for instance i asked her one night what happens if this person wants to be a concert pianist but doesn't have the the ability to achieve it Mm -hmm. she said what we will try to do is guide them in another direction because the realities of what their abilities are what they laid out in that life plan sometimes we can help it but in general, if they don't have the ability, there's nothing we can do for them. They're, general, they're, they're trying to help you live the best life you can live. Mm-hmm. But they're they try- do have senses of humor, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, the guides, uh, they all have a sense of humor. God has a sense of humor. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes he says things that are, are pretty funny, too. But uh, no, the, the, all, of, all of the heavenly spirits be they the saints, the guides, the angels, God himself. They are all trying to help you fulfill your life plan. All they want is for you to make good decisions, to help others, to lead humanity to the point that they can be trusted with the information that is going to allow them to travel the planets, and to get along with the other advanced civilizations. And they want you to advance in heaven. The last thing they want is to have to send you to lower levels. Because if they're doing that, then you're living a life that's harming others. Just live a good life. Don't harm others. Do follow the golden rule and have a foundation of faith. That's simply all you have to do. If an archangel is, you know, going from an angel to an archangel and up the ladder and decides they just don't want to go any higher and it's a little too much for them, although that's a human feeling, uh, emotion, but can they go back down to where they came from or even maybe disappear? I don't know. Okay. Uh, I've never heard of an angel. Uh, retro- no, I don't I, yeah. I, I, um, okay, I've got like we've got three minutes. Um, and one more question How do you know if you're following your life plan if you don't know what it is? 
if you're leading a good life, if you're accomplishing things, if you're following God, then in all reality, you're following your life plan. If you're doing evil things, you know you're not. There's no evil in a life plan. So everything evil that you do, you know you're not on the path. If you pray and ask for guidance, you will get a good feeling on whether you're following your life plan or not. But if you're not following evil, then the odds are pretty good that you're that you're going strong with what you're supposed to be doing. Okay. That works. Um, you know, sometimes, I don't know, for better or for worse, you know, we, we try and with the help of them, they guide us and that would be a good thing. Because sometimes, yeah. you know, you're beating your head against the wall. Why, am, why is life so bad for me? What's going on? You know, I hate my life, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, and then that's hard to think that that was part of your life plan, but maybe it was. Yeah, and and toxicity with other people, mm-hmm. negativity in your own mind can almost assure you that you're not following your life plan. And how do you? Well, I suppose you could call upon the angels to get you back on track, right? Yes, you have to pray. If you don't pray, they would do not know what's on your mind. You have to ask them for guidance, and quite often things will happen. Uh, a friend of mine's father yesterday was diagnosed with a with a a terminal and operable throat cancer. Mm. He called me and asked me to pray, and this morning they came in and they said that he did not have any cancer. No. Oh. So, if, there you go. <laughs> it, I mean, so we just did it. We just had another miracle through prayer, and it's it's God that does it. It's not me. I just direct it with His words, and His He gave me this prayer to use, and it really works. So we we just healed a cancer overnight again, and uh, if you ask, and if you are following a good life, then the odds of a miracle go much higher in your favor. Mm-hmm. Well, we could still talk for another hour, but we can't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so once again, who, who are you channeling um, this Sunday on Para-X? Uh, shoot, I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> It'll oh, be a surprise. No, I, I, I just remembered. Okay. We're going to do Outlaws of the Old West. Oh, Nice. We're going to talk to Jesse James, Butch Cassidy, and Billy the Kid. I like that. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. We've been with Billy several times, and he is funny. <laughs> He's got a great – you never know what's coming out of his mouth, and you got to kind of anticipate what's coming. Mm-hmm. Well, everybody join him. What time is that again for everybody? Um, it's 7 o'clock here. That which is mountain time. It would be six o'clock for me. And uh, it would be nine, nine o'clock for East East Coast. Yeah, okay. All right. Hey Connie, thanks. Um Barry, thank you very much. And um It's always a pleasure. You know we're here. I know, and that's a good thing. <laughs> I don't even have to call in the archangels to get you. I know where to find you. You do um, <laughs> it's always good. <laughs> And let's thank everybody for their questions for tonight. There were some good questions and for listening in. And until next time, everybody, blessed be and merry meet again. Good night. This has been another edition of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Be sure to tune in next week at the same time for another great guest and more fun. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without permission is strictly prohibited. Copyright 2009. You have been listening to the Para-X Radio Network. 